Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Just want to remind everybody that our Sunday morning show at 11 a.m. will actually be on at 7 p.m. tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern time for the Joe and Joe Weather Show. And it should be a pretty good show. Uh, We are uh, going to preview tonight's lunar eclipse and figure out who may partially clear out enough in order to be able to see it. And then we're also going to talk about Monday, where we have a strong cold front and upper trough. And what looks like is going to be a rather robust uh, outbreak of severe weather uh, in the east, and particularly in our neck of the woods, eastern Pennsylvania to southern New England, down into Virginia, uh, and even points a bit further south than that. Now, the issue for today is that uh, the uh, system from last night is continuing to move northward, so that's a big plus. Uh, We are going to see uh, whatever clouds that are around this morning burn off to some sunshine and some daytime heating. Temperatures are going to reach into the upper 70s and low 80s in much uh, much of our zone. That's going to trigger off probably some scattered convective thunderstorms late this afternoon and into this evening. We have a little bit of an upper trough. It's it's a little hard to see here on the NAM, but you notice where the uh, little height line here just kind of kinks. It. That is just a weak upper trough that's coming through uh, late this afternoon and this evening that could set off some scattered thunderstorms. Not everyone is going to see them. I don't think they're going to be severe. But uh, oftentimes when you get these thunderstorms in situations where you're dealing with something weak in the upper atmosphere, you get a lot of debris cloudiness that's left over afterward. And it should try to at least partially clear out in some places. But uh, when we look at the percentage sky cover forecast from the Weather Service, um, the numbers are at that that low. Uh, We do see some uh, areas that are in the 60s. In terms of sky coverage, so that says, you know, three-fifths of the sky is is covered and two-fifths clear. Other areas are more like in the 70s and low 80s. So I guess it's going to be a matter of whether big enough breaks develop in the right spot <clears throat> in order for you to be able to see the eclipse. And uh, there's sort of a mishmash of numbers everywhere. Uh, if you really want low numbers, you have to go well up into upstate New York and up into New England where you start to see the numbers drop uh, to 50 or less. And uh, the eclipse should be getting underway at roughly at, at about 10 o'clock. The other issue uh, is, as we mentioned, severe weather risk. And the Storm Prediction Center for tomorrow, Monday, uh, has enhanced risk of severe weather uh, for much of upstate New York. Uh, northern New Jersey, uh, actually running north-south uh, in through New Jersey, uh, down into uh, northern Delaware, much of Maryland, northeast Virginia. The back half uh, runs through uh, east, through central PA and into western New York, uh, probably pretty much up to about Syracuse and just north of that. You see the marginal risk heads all the way down into Georgia and into southwest Alabama and also covers uh, parts of uh, southeastern New England and up into western Maine. They have pushed the slight risk area out a bit further east into central, uh, se- se- central Suffolk County on Long Island and also pushed it a little bit, a bit further east into Connecticut and Massachusetts. That's going to come with corresponding tornado risk of Five, two to five percent, the five percent area, mainly in that enhanced zone. Uh, this looks to me like it could be uh, a fairly robust outbreak of storms late tomorrow afternoon. As far as rainfall is concerned, and these are storms that are going to be moving along, so they're not going to have a whole lot of time to produce a lot of rain over the next seven days. So this takes us to next Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, we are going to see anywhere from a half an inch to upwards of an inch inland, and uh, you see in southeastern New England it's less. Uh, We're talking about less than a quarter of an inch in some places. And also from North Carolina on southward into the southeast, not a whole lot of rain over the next week, about anywhere from a quarter to maybe as much as a half an inch in some areas. Florida rainfall a bit more robust, as is the Ohio Valley, with up to uh, an inch and a half being indicated there into the northern plains, pockets in the Pacific Northwest, and for the forever dry area in the southwest. So we're going to get this kink to go through. Then tomorrow, uh, solid daytime heating. Temperatures will be reaching up into the 80s. Uh, We will see uh, dew points that will be rising into the 60s. And then take a look at this upper trough that is moving eastward. Uh, There are 
uh, whenever you see, and we're looking at the 10,000 foot level, we mentioned this yesterday, you got that comma shaped twist and it's a strengthening trough that lifts up into the Northeast. And that's a little concerning because uh, that's telling you as you, know, you, the worst time to get thunderstorms usually is when you have the features all strengthening and the worst time to uh, experience a thunderstorm is while it is strengthening. That's when it's at its most energetic and while it's in that process. And we're seeing some indications of some 50 knot jet streaks showing up uh, in parts in parts of the area uh, as this upper trough goes by. Uh, that uh, is usually indicative of thunderstorms that could produce strong downdrafts and also might even be have the ability of producing rotation. And I think that's why you're seeing the tornado risk. And then after that, at least we see some improvement in that the upper trough continues to move to the northeast. Uh, we should see dry and seasonally cool weather, we'll call it, for Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, before things change and just to get a, a look at this and what it looks like on the surface uh, the, the models all seem to be kicking on to this idea with thunderstorms you notice today's uh, on the GFS for example uh, I'm sorry on the NAM uh, not really doing very much it just kind of pop up in fact they go away a little faster which might be encouraging and then for tomorrow here comes that system uh, during the afternoon and evening, we get that uh, shower, strong shower, thunderstorm uh, development with it. Then it goes out, and then we see, again, improving weather conditions and dry Tuesday into Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday's highs in the area from eastern PA to southern New England will be generally in the upper 60s and low 70s. Now, beyond Wednesday, we have a little upper air disturbance that comes in Wednesday night into Thursday. And that might produce a few showers. We're going to be transitioning over to a ridge along the East Coast, which means we're going to start to warm things up, particularly uh, late week on Friday and going into the weekend. I think next weekend may be the first time this spring that we will be experiencing what we would sincerely call warm and hopefully rain-free weather other than some scattered convective thunderstorms. Doesn't look like we have any fronts to worry about until maybe Sunday night or on Monday when a front might be coming through. So we'll deal with that when we get there. So don't forget, folks, uh, the Joe and Joe Weather Show tonight is at 7, uh, at 7 p.m. I don't know if I said 7.30 at the beginning of the, the show. It's at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and we're going to be pre uh, previewing uh, the... Um, uh, the lunar eclipse tonight and talking about the potential for a robust severe weather outbreak on Monday. So have a great Sunday. Enjoy yourselves and we'll see you later.